Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I received a comment asking to discuss the differences between the FTSE All World ETF and the FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund. And this is a great question because honestly, they are very, very similar. However, there are a few differences and we're going to discuss them in this video. To make it easier, I'm going to refer to the FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund as the Global All Cap, and I'm going to refer to the FTSE All World ETF as the All World. So going forward, that's how I'm going to refer to them. I think the first thing to say is actually these funds are very, very similar. They're both global funds first and foremost, and this means that they're trying to represent the entire world. They're investing in companies that are across the entire globe, and that's, that's common with both of these funds. And also they're both passive funds, meaning they're not actively managed. You can put your money in and then you can just leave it. You don't really need to do any hard work. And they're both very low fee. So the ongoing charges for both of these funds are very, very low, which means you as an investor get to keep more of the returns that you make. Before we jump into the nitty gritty differences between these two funds, I think it's worth just pointing out quickly that as a general rule, the All World is much more available to investors than the All Cap is. So what I mean by this is the All World is pretty available on most trading platforms, but the All Cap is available on Vanguard, Hargreaves, Lansdowne, and perhaps a couple of others, but it's much, much more easy to get hold of the All World. So just something to be aware of, perhaps do a quick search on the platform that you're using just to see which is available to you. But of course, if you're a brand new investor, then make a decision as to which one you want to invest in and find a platform that supports that. Quick disclaimer, I am not a qualified financial advisor, so everything in this video is purely for entertainment and information purposes only. And just to be transparent with you as well, I personally invest in the FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund, and I do this on Vanguard. Right, let's get into it. The first main difference to point out is that the All World is an ETF, whereas the All Cap is an index fund. Now, I don't want to spend the whole video talking about the differences between an index fund and an ETF, because if you need to know that, you can quite easily find this information. But to be honest, as an investor picking between these two funds, it shouldn't really make too much difference to you. The difference to point out really, the primary difference between an ETF and an index fund is just how they're traded. So with an ETF, the price will fluctuate throughout the day and it can be traded throughout the day when the market's open. Whereas with an index fund, the price comes in once a day and it can be traded so you can purchase or sell your index fund once a day. But I really wouldn't use this as a reason to differentiate and pick either one of these funds. Especially if you're a long-term investor, it won't really make much difference to you. The next thing to say about these two funds, and this one is a similarity between the two, and that is that you can get both of these funds as an accumulation fund or as an income fund. So this just means the difference as to whether the fund is paying you dividends or whether the fund is reinvesting the returns automatically, which is what you'll get if you pick an accumulation fund. So as I said, both of these funds are available as an income type of fund or as an accumulation type of fund. However, the platform that you use will dictate which one is available. Just as a quick example, Vanguard offer the global all cap as both income and accumulation, but they only offer all world as I believe an income based fund. However, if you really wanted the all world as an accumulation fund, you could find it just not on Vanguard platform. On Vanguard, the dividend yield for the global all cap sits at 1.31%. And as I said, if you've picked an accumulation fund, this amount will get automatically reinvested. And as for the All World on Vanguard, the dividend yield sits at 1.41%. And as I said, Vanguard only offer this fund as an income type of fund. So this means that the 1.41% dividend yield will be paid out as an income to the investor and it will be up to them to then reinvest that money. But if you want the accumulation version of this fund, you can find it elsewhere. Let's now talk about one of the main differences between these two funds. And it kind of gives it away in the name a little bit. So with the global all cap, you are getting exposure to all cap size companies. So you are getting small cap companies, 
mid cap companies and large cap companies when you invest into this fund. However, with the All World, you are only getting mid-sized companies and large-sized companies. So mid-cap companies and large-cap companies. You are not getting exposure to any of them small-cap companies. So this means that the All-Cap is a little bit more diversified. You are getting a more diversified exposure. And just to give you an idea of the split when you invest into this fund, you will be getting roughly 10% into small-cap stocks, 20% into mid-cap stocks, and about 70% into large cap stocks, just as an indication. I've actually put together a little table that I used for my previous video that shows the differences between all of Vanguard's global funds. So I'm gonna use that table, but I'm only going to look at these two funds that we're discussing today. So I'm gonna record my screen and we can just talk through what that table shows us and the differences between these two funds. As you can see, the ongoing charge for both of these funds are very, very low. So with the global all cap, you are paying 0.23%. And with the all world, you're paying 0.22%. So there is only a 0.01% difference between these. However, you could argue that that 0.01% would make a big difference if you're holding this for the long term and you're putting lots of money into this fund. But as I said, they are both very low. So I guess the all world does beat the all cap in terms of the ongoing charges but you need to weigh up everything before making a decision. The next thing in the table is the number of stocks. And this is another place that these two funds differ quite a lot. So with the All World, you are getting 3,816 stocks. With the Global All Cap, you are getting double that really, 7,165 stocks. So you are getting exposure to way, way more stocks if you opt for the Global All Cap. And as I've already said, with the global all cap, you are getting exposure to all cap size companies. So that's something you need to think about as an investor. Do you see the benefit of, it, of investing in those small cap companies? Quite often with small companies, you will get a potential higher return, but it's a little bit more risky. So it's something to think about. Both of these funds, as I said, are global funds and they both invest in developed and emerging markets. Vanguard have rated both of these funds a five out of seven risk, so there's not much difference there. And now we need to talk about the past performance. So what I've done is I found the average return for both of these funds over the last five years. As you know, past performance does not indicate future performance, but it's a good idea to have a look into it before making your decision as to which to invest into. With the All World, we have seen a 12.66% return over the last five years on average. And with the All Cap, it's slightly lower at 12.38%. I'm going to throw some graphs up on the screen now that have come straight from Vanguard's website for these two funds. But what you will see, and I'm looking at them now, is that if you look at either fund since its inception, they have pretty much seen quite similar growths and quite similar returns. So they both seem to be really, really good funds to invest in and the past performance doesn't seem to be too different between the two funds. Now I think it's time to take a deep dive into these two funds and see exactly what you're investing in. So I'm recording my screen and I'm looking at Vanguard's website and we've just gone onto the portfolio data tab so we can really see this broken down. So the first one is the All World. So as I said, you're getting 3,816 funds when you invest into this. And if we scroll to the region exposure, we can see that the largest region that this fund invests in, probably as expected as it's trying to mimic the um, global market is North America. So with this fund, you are investing into 62.6%. 62.6% is invested into North America as a region. So if we just compare that to the global all cap, it's pretty similar, 63.1%. So there's not much difference there. And if we look back at the all world, we can see that about 16% is in Europe and 10, just over 10% is in the Pacific. So if we have a look here, yeah, all cap is pretty much the same. 10% in emerging markets for all cap, pretty much 10% in the emerging markets for um, all world as well. So I think that's showing that there's really not much difference in the region exposure between these two funds. Definitely not a big enough difference to be deciding one or the other based on region exposure. So now let's have a look at market allocation. 
With the FTSE All World, you are investing 60% into the US market. With the Global All Cap, again, 60% into the US. The next biggest one with the All Cap is Japan at 6.2. And we're seeing a very, very similar thing here with the, Glo uh, with the All World, sorry, 6.4% into Japan. It starts to differ slightly here. With the All World, you are then getting 3.8% into China and 3.8% into the UK. Whereas with the All Cap, you are getting 3.8% into the UK, but 36 into China. And if we just scroll down here, you can start seeing that they're really, really similar. The percentage into each country is very, very similar between the two funds. So you could have a look into that in a little bit more detail, but there's really not much difference. So we're going to scroll down now to see which sector each fund holds its biggest proportion in. With the All World, we can see that the technology sector is the biggest at 25% followed by the consumer discretionary sector at 15.6 and then financials. Comparing this to the all cap, we can pretty much see the same thing. So the biggest sector is technology and then it follows the same sort of pattern here. So again, this is probably not what you want to be basing your decision on. Lastly, and this is where they will differ, is in their holdings. So the company, that, company sorry, that they're actually investing into we'll probably see quite a lot of the same companies pop up on both lists for the biggest holdings. So the percentage of the funds allocated to these companies. But if you were to really dive into this, you would start seeing a difference because the global all cap, as I said, have, have allocation to those small companies, whereas the all world does not. The final thing to be aware of as an investor looking at these two funds is the price per share. With the FTSE All World, the price per share as of the 7th of January 2022 sits at £89.94, whereas it's slightly higher with the All Cap, and that is £178.87. These prices will fluctuate day to day, but it's just something to be aware of, and you also need to know whether the platform you invest in offers fractional shares or not. Okay, with all that said, let's summarise what we've spoken about in this video. I think the first thing to say is that these two funds are both fantastic options for investors in my opinion. And to be honest, they're both really, really similar. There's really not much in it as to whether you would want to invest in the all world or the all cap in my opinion. But the main differences that we've discussed today that's important for an investor to know is that with the global all cap, you are getting all cap size represented in your fund. So you are going to get exposure to small cap companies mid cap companies and large cap companies, whereas you're not getting exposure to those small cap companies if you opt for the all world. Now, that's not to say that one is better than the other, just you as an investor needs to decide whether you want exposure to small cap companies or whether you don't. And the other main difference is in the number of stocks offered in these two funds. So with the global all cap, you are getting exposure to nearly double the amount of stocks as you would in the all world. I think this is a real benefit of the all cap and this is pretty much the main reason I decided to invest in the all cap as opposed to the all world. But you can probably argue that the all world has some benefits that the all cap doesn't. It is really, really close, but it's something to be aware of. I really hope this video helps anyone out there that's a bit confused between these two funds. And yeah, if you've got anything to add that I may have missed out today, please pop it in a comment below. Really hope you enjoyed. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel for more upcoming content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.